Yes, hello. I'm Tim Moody. I'm President and CEO of Pan Global Resources. Uh, we have uh, an advanced copper project in southern Spain, uh, which we are very vigorously pursuing along with a number of other targets in that uh, general area. Tim, thank you very much for the introduction. Nice to meet you. Um, <clears throat> you don't look as if you're in your normal office environment. Uh, where are you at the moment? I'm, I'm actually in Seville. So uh, I'll be heading out to site. We've got some site visits uh, this week and next week. Good. April in Spain is a lovely time of the year now. Um, it, it must be must be getting a little bit warmer out there. Yes, I think today is going to reach 30 degrees Celsius. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not... Uh, it's not summer heat, but uh, certainly very pleasant. A very ple uh, something that the Canadians and the British um, are rather envious of at the moment. You did an interview a couple of weeks ago with Matt uh, on Crux, and in that you spoke about the goals for the year and the kind of the catalysts for for value growth. Um, <clears throat> the the market, although the gold price has kind of kicked off and the copper price is still strong, the the valuations of junior companies is still pretty much rock bottom. And, and even though you put out some good metallurgical results last week, the share price hasn't actually jumped. So, I mean, do, do you want to just kind of comment on what the what it feels like uh, or, or what you're seeing from the market at the moment? Yes, look, it's. Uh, I think there is a bit of a disconnect really with, uh, in, particularly for in our situation, you know, uh, a copper company uh, and what we think is uh, a very positive outlook for copper prices and in fact you know i've said before with to uh on the crust uh interviews that copper you know, the, the incentive price for copper uh must be much higher i think uh, if we're going to uh meet the sort of uh, the, the demand that um that uh, people are projecting going forward so there is a bit of a disconnect with this at this time uh, it seems that uh there are you know any uh, genius and there's no companies being particularly singled out here we're all being caught with the same sort of sentiment um so i, I guess all we can do is what well, uh, stick to our netting and um, you know we're we uh, we have money in the bank and we're we, we can control the drill rigs and that's what we're doing. And and uh, hopefully at some stage, the valuations of these copper projects, which are advancing, will catch up with the, the fundamentals of the, of the, of the metal price cycle. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. And I, I think, uh, you know, one of the, I guess the value propositions that we, we, we are presenting really is that I think we're one of the few copper companies that are sort of poised to really uh, capture um, a, a turnaround in the copper copper price not that the copper price is bad at the moment but um i think where it's uh, where it's heading um you know we could we could have a project that could be uh, a, a potential uh, uh, producer in within this decade which is which is a big advantage and that's when the copper price is expected to accelerate well, I'll, I'll come on to that on the timeline to production but going back to one of your earlier comments about you know the uh the incentive price of copper isn't there. You're saying that kind of the copper prices need to be stronger to to attract investment. But I I, I question that because it, to me it feels as if the copper price is quite strong. You know, four dollars a pound, uh, eight thousand nine hundred dollars per ton is quite a strong copper price. And the I think if you've got capital, I think the producers and it's sorry if you've got capital and you've got the resources that are ready the producers would be um not holding back because of metal price um I, I really for, it feels to me that for the junior companies or for the development projects what's lacking is um equity capital it's 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 not the price it's the the availability of 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 um investors who are willing to buy the shares and fund the fund the the, the growth plans do you see what I'm kind of getting at? Yeah, I do. Uh, I guess I come at it from a different uh, different angle. If you if you step back a bit, and uh, you know, energy prices have gone up, costs have you know, have, have gone up. Uh, the the big producers can't just turn on uh, additional copper, um, you know, overnight. Uh, that requires big investments. Uh, so, you know, for uh, and what you what you've seen, you can. Uh, do your own research on this, but um, there's been a, a generally an underinvestment in exploration, an underinvestment in in development of new new deposits. And given that the, you know, the some of the forecasts are that the need for a, another sort of uh, mate war class ore deposit to be added, uh, discovered, and put onto production every year, um, you know, I just don't see it at the moment unless the uh, 
the, the fastest way for uh, the, the new copper to hit the uh, the market is for uh, the cutoffs to come down. And for that to happen, you need a higher incentive price. Okay. And I don't see that at the moment. So, yeah. so I think, uh, yeah, there are plenty plenty of people out there, yeah, like listening, listening to Robert Friedland the other day again, you know, he's, he's, he, he sees it as well, that uh, copper prices must rise if, uh, if we're going to meet the, the demand for uh, copper and uh, the, the zero uh, carbon um, target. Good. Um, thank you for that. And um, and just coming to your comment about how how do you think that this can be a kind of a, a project within the decade? I mean, that's seven years away. Now, if you look at the the average development timelines of copper projects around the world, I think um, Minex Consulting out of Australia do, do, kind of got the best numbers on this. They put. Um, <clears throat> The kind of the, the average copper development timeline at around 17 years, which it would take us to 2040, um, which is kind of right at the peak, uh, demand. Um, obviously that includes some, some mega projects, which take a long time. But, um, uh, what gives you the confidence that this could be a kind of a, let's say, call it a seven year development line, not a 17 year development line? Yeah. Well, look, I think there's a number of, uh, a number of things that, that give me confidence that we could be seeing something into production into, in this, this, uh, this decade, um, or in the next 10 years, let's say, is, uh, that we've got near surface mineralization. In fact, it comes to surface. It's open pitable, uh, in a, in a mining friendly location. A very, and lots of very simple geometry. It looks to be from the early words, very simple, um, metallurgy. Etc. So, um, and there is some case history here. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, um, there was a discovery made in 2012, the Magdalena deposit in the same belt that we're exploring. Um, that was found by the Matza joint venture. Uh, that was put into production in 2015. So, from a grassroots discovery to production, that is very quick. So uh, you know we're we're looking at and that's an underground mine. Yes, they had some. There was some. Uh, they had a plant off of deliver to. But we're looking at you know an open pit up uh, project in in a in a ascension. It's like ground build environment. So that gives me the confidence that we could put this into production. Yeah, and all you know, the economics and everything else uh, uh, go as we hope. Uh, this is something that could be brought into on stream. Yeah, very small, quickly. Good, and um, of course you're working towards um, on the Romana project, um, the the Roman project. I, I, I love the the Iberian pirate belt for the the two thousand year history plus. Um, <clears throat> but um, you're working on the Romana project. You've got a, a pre feasibility study coming out uh, in the middle of the year. You've just published some metallurgical uh, test work, and I think that speaks to your comment or your 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 answer about the kind of the timelines for development so can you kind of summarize the news release and kind of um, the, the the results of this metallurgical test work please it just uh, just to first correct up we're not saying for a pre-feasibility study uh for the middle of this year but uh you know at this at this stage yeah uh, what we're, we're uh, working towards is to 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 uh, delineate the steps of the of the mineralization at our amount of project uh, target uh, project and uh, once we've got that, then we'd look to yeah, put out a resource and move into a crewing economic uh, assessment. My so mistake. Th- yes. Apologies. Uh, no problem. So, uh, so you know, depending really that uh, one of the uh, things that we're waiting on there is the uh, the access so that we can complete the drilling, particularly to the west, uh, to further de- uh, delineate that uh, sort of western extension where the mineralization is currently open. Um, so once we, we have an idea of what the yeah, potential size is, uh, then we feel far more uh, uh, well, we'll be much better position then to put out a, a, a resource and, and get going. So really, uh, the timing of when we commence a, a PA would be really depends on how quickly we can get in and drill that uh, drill drill those extensions. Um, all going well. Uh, we're we're weeks away, not not uh, not a year away. And uh, we can we can get in and, and uh, complete the majority of that drilling uh, before the end of the year, and that sometime uh, in the first half of next year uh, will bring out a resource. And of course, r- really, what you what you're effectively doing is if you can get access to the the land, so you can target the surface mineralization, that will give you the chance to put an envelope around the the kind of the most likely 
uh, target resource that's kind of suitable for fast tracking into production. And so, so what you what you're talking about is really um, defining the limit of your mineralization as as long as that is a kind of a low cost and relatively simple process. I mean, because you can always chase deeper and deeper resources, but I think you kind of everybody has to draw a line uh, uh, eventually and say, like, this is this is going to take us into production, and this is an economic uh, proposition. So you're you're saying you should, if if you get the 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 farm access in weeks, possibly months, then you can drill out through the second half of the year, and then put that limit around that kind of first pass resource yeah that's that's correct we've got about 1.2 kilometers of strike length at the moment uh and mineralization is open at depth in, in a number of areas it's open along strike particularly to the west uh we do have a very big you know, target off to the east as well uh but that's a sort of separate uh, separate thing but uh yeah really that priority is to test that western extension we can see potential uh, based on the geophysics for the strike lead to potentially extend to two kilometres, so it, it, yeah, if we if that's confirmed with the with the drillery, um, yeah, that that's going to give us some pretty a pretty significant uh, yeah uh, potentially open pit target. Uh, I, I know that the Iberian pirate belt is polymetallic. Uh, the normal assemblage I kind of associate with the area is uh, copper lead zinc. Uh, your mineralogy is copper and tin. Um, is it a classic VMS? Um, and you've, you've got some silver in there as well. How does the tin appear metallurgically or mineralogically? And I, I, I know the, the mineralization, the, the metallurgical test work you've just published is about the copper recoveries and you're going to follow up on the tin recoveries. But just can you orientate me in terms of the kind of the mineralogy of, of, of the resource? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm glad you've asked that. Uh, so uh, is it a conventional vulcanogenic massive sulfide of VMS deposit? Not really. I mean, most... Uh, you know, it's for, uh, it's probably a sub sea floor, we have replacement style uh, deposit. So within the spectrum of the VMS family, yeah. But like many of the big uh, VMS deposits and uh, you know things that are being mined in the Iberian Pyrofelt today, that they, they are more massive sulfide deposits, so big pyrite bodies with with some other metals. With yeah. It. So, um, uh, hence you get here often the parts, those massive sulfide lead zinc parts, etc. Um, so I think uh, because we're dealing with something which is more a replacement style, that yep. may count for some of the differences that we're seeing in the mineralization itself. You know, in turn, so we're looking at copper, tin, and silver as the main metals in the mineralization we've got. There. In places we get a bit of cable, you know, and you could elevate it in gold and so on. But essentially, it's the main three metals look like uh, copper, tin, and silver. Uh, and it's also coarser grain and lower in pyrite. Mm. Uh, the, the main copper minerals are uh, is chalper pyrite. There's a little bit of chalper side as well. Um, the tin is mainly cassiterite. Uh, in fact, it's dominantly cassiterite. We don't, we've not really seen much of anything else. There's no stannite. We've not seen any of that. Yep. So that's very positive. Uh, the silver seems to be with the copper. So, okay. uh, so um yeah, I, I guess it's uh, in terms of being different to many other deposits. I guess there are some similarities as well. Uh, you know, I've drawn the the similarities with Nevis Corva. Although Nevis Corva has a lot of massive sulphide, uh, they they do have copper and tin as well. So in fact, yeah. Nevis Corva was your biggest tin mine for for a number of years. So uh, you know, I think we we do share some similarities in that in that. Uh, in that regard, and you, you've mentioned the the coarse grain uh, chalka pyrite. Is the cassiterite uh, very fine, or you know, what's the grain size of the cassiterite? Yeah, so the cassiterites are really a spectrum as well. So some, you know, it's visible, it's coarse, um, and then we also have fine cassiterite. So yeah, that's going to, that's going to be the real test with the the metallurgical workers to is to see uh, how much of that thing we can we can recover, and what what processing. Uh, do we need to do to get the finer grade material? Yeah, what that's that uh, uh, um, yeah, that's the work that's uh, that's uh, from to ready. Good. I just I just re remember from studying uh, Las Cruces, uh, which yeah. is just up the road from you, that there was this um, there was a relatively complex uh, alteration fronts because you had the 
<clears throat> the emplacement position relative to seawater. So you had kind of uh, kind of an, an in situ alteration profile. Um, and then there was a kind of a subsequent uh, oxidation and uh, kind of more recent uh, uh, ox- um, kind of weathering profile as well, alteration profile. What's the complexity of the mineralization in, in, in the body at Roma- uh, Romana that you've got there? Uh, well, fortunately, it's not, not very complex. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, very simple geometry. Yeah. Um, it's very predictable um, and and very continuous. Um, so uh, there is a little bit of supergene enrichment you know, near the, where the, the unconformity is with the older rocks that post the mineralization and the younger sort of post mineral cover, um, which is similar to, ne- to uh, Las Cruces. So, you know, what was mined in the open pit of Las Cruces was chalcosite, yeah. which was a super gene uh, style of mineralization you know which sort of upgraded the the primary sulfides uh, to some yeah you know, very high grades sort of five to seven percent copper yeah uh, which was necessary to to support an open pit given they had to remove 150 meters of cover to get to that um, so so um, we do see a, a little bit of uh, super gene style mineralization um, yeah, we have where the we have some tertiary sediment sitting over the top of the the deposit, the erosional, yeah, the erosion, um, old erosion surface. In some areas, we go very quickly into fresh uh, chuck of bar up. So, yeah, um, yeah. So we have a little bit of certain gene and uh, in places, uh, but uh, yeah, it's not not uh, t- preserved to the same extent that uh, it it was at at. Um, Las Cruces. Uh, another another feature of Las Cruces was the, the the overlying sediments were these very unconsolidated miles, so they had to have these kind of super low pit angles to kind of make sure that the slope stability was there. What, what's your depth to mineralization? I, I know you've said that at points it 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 it, it crops um, that they're outcrop. And it, do you are you in the same kind of um, um, loosely consolidated sediments? Yeah, well, look, there's we have a combination of sort of uh, tertiary and quaternary cover. Some places, yes, quaternary cover sitting over the top of it. Some of that's quite confident, uh, sort of uh, carbonate, carbonaceous, uh, or sorry, uh, carbonate bearing uh, conglomerates and, and so on. Um, yeah, the depth of cover or the thickness of cover varies from zero to, I think, maximum is about 30 metres. Uh, but the majority of it would be sort of less than twenty meters of a thing, uh, which is which is not too, too too much of a headache when it comes to stripping. I mean that that's completely manageable. Um, <clears throat> when you when you compile your metallurgical samples for test work, um, your, your representative samples and the kind of the variability analysis, uh, you, you you said that there's kind of it was a relatively simple ore body to deal with. Uh, because of the homogeneity of the mineralization, how simple was it, and how much thought did you have to put into selecting those samples? Yeah, so uh, we used the consultants to help guide us on that. Um, so yeah, we picked, uh, uh, I guess, uh, an area of the deposit that was, uh, I guess, fairly t- central, um, and uh, we used composites from from drill uh, from various drill holes, uh, and that, yeah, and we used a. A pretty, hopefully, a conservative head grade of 0.39 percent. Yeah, um, um, that that was really, you know, the basis for it. Uh, you know, we we haven't tried to sort of, it's, I guess, some some uh, attempted to do, which is to to go for just the high grade and, and do your metal edge chest work on that. So, so we've used a pretty conservative, um, yeah, grade of mineralization for the those those initial tests. And I should say that. To get to where we got to and the and what was published in the usual early, early this week on that alert, yeah, there was a lot of uh, what they call rougher tests and then uh, the smell tests, etc., to get to uh, these lock cycle tests. Um, so there's a lot of lot of stages that have gone through it before you get to the do- producing these lock cycle um, no, t- tests. So, um, but by which you mean that it was a comprehensive metallurgical test program? Very, yeah, very much so. Yeah, this was this is trying to give us, you know, we did an early uh, orientation metallurgy um, study, just to give us some some idea. Are there any red flags? You know, what should we be doing in terms of designing um, a, a more detailed um, uh, metallurgical test program? Uh, so we used that to guide 
uh, this stage that we just to release the results for. Good, um, and of course, uh, I, I took a I took a lot of comfort from the fact that your head grade or the the, the grade of that um, was 039 percent copper. I thought, thank goodness they haven't um, forced it; they haven't pushed the the the, the limits here. And I think we should. It's also worth mentioning that the 86 percent recovery is is a pretty good result. Yeah, it's uh, 86 to 89.5 percent actually. So it's that's you know that's that's very good. Uh, for the Iberian pirate belts in good in general. Um, so, you know, that, um, that was a very good result uh, for us from, you know, the two uh, long cycle tests we did. Um, and you, but you meant... Uh, said, Go on. You know, yeah, I was going to say, as I you know, said in the news uh, releasing sort of commented, it's not just, it's not just the, uh, the, the sort of concentrate grade, uh, sorry, the recoveries, it's the concentrate grade together with some of the other positives as well that, that is really very pleasing. It's it's really confirming some of the <clears throat> things that we thought uh, would be uh, the case with the mineralisation based on what we were saying early on, but um, yeah, to get those results uh, that we published were really pleasing. They 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 are significant in the context of of the Iberian pirate belt. Uh, and, and again, in the context of the Iberian pirate belt, um, there's always that issue of um, the cleanliness of the concentrate. I, 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 yeah, I think you mentioned in the in the news release that you've kind of you've got a little bit more analysis to do on those on those fine the fine tuning or the or the the, the minor elements. Um, any any comment on that so far? Yeah, look, we're not ex- we're not expecting any surprises there. The uh, the multi element analyses and all the drill core, the early work we did indicates you know we've got sort of negligible deleterious uh, metal or mineral uh, content. So we're not expecting any anything from that, and that's what the metallurgists metallurgists are telling us as well. So, okay. uh, you know, it's very really good again to get the confirmation on that. Uh, what what's, what we uh, what we want to know is here just how much of that silver is is, is, is recovered as well. So we haven't got the silver assay that's that's going to come, and maybe there's some other metals too. We'll see see what happens because uh, you know I guess when you're taking say 039 percent and you take it all the way to a central concentrate grade of to 24 to to uh, yeah whatever it was uh, 28.5 percent. Um, yeah, that that gives an opportunity for quite a lot of up- upgrading. You know, uh, capturing a lot of that silver, even though the the suit grade of the silver in, in the, the mineralization is not particularly high. You know, when you when you look at that uh, concentr- concentrate upgrading, um, it really it you know, gives us reason to believe that we're going to get a payable silver. Um, recovery. If your silver partitions or is linked to the the copper mineralization, and you enrich your you, you enrich your your copper grade, whatever it is, seventy five times, then you're going to get a commensurate uh, pull on the on the on the silver grade. Exactly. Said it better than I did. <laughs> um, good. So onwards and upwards. Um, control the things you can control. Uh, you'll be busy drilling this year. Um, presumably, you're going to hang. You're going to hold back on your um, drilling the other targets until you've got more clarity on the the western trend. You know, the 800 meters of untested Romana. Yeah. Look, uh, just before we get onto that, uh, one one really important aspect that I mentioned in the, the or it was in the last news release about the metallurgical work was the the grind size and the work in the thing. Yeah. So it essentially which translates to energy consumption. So yeah. you know, the mineralization, as you sort of asked me before, you know, it seems to be coarser grain. Um, so the, you know, it, it looks like you know, we may be able to get away with a significantly coarser grind size than many of the other the operating mines in, in the belt. That's a big deal. Because when you think that thirty percent or, or more, sometimes of the you know, the operating costs are related to the energy, yeah. it's really down the other grinding. How hard you have to work to get the, the material. If we if we're uh, dealing with sort of sixty five percent of the material passing at one hundred and six uh, microns or thereabouts, then compared to say some of the other mines, it might be grinding down to twenty microns. That's a big deal. So, um, yeah, that's a big energy saving. So I just wanted to sort of mention that, uh, um, yeah, that's a, it was a major point of that, uh, of those results. Well, that, that's, a, that's also a function of the kind of the emplacement or the, the, the genesis of the, um, of, of the mineralization, because 
in a in a classic um sea floor situation or just just sub sea f- um floor you get this quenching of your mineralizing fluids by the cold seawater and so you get this very very fine grained and often interlocked mineralization whereas the 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 volcanic um volcanic hosted massive sulfide kind of replacement at a deeper level uh, there's more chance for the crystals to actually grow and for the precipitation to be slightly slower so in a, in a, in a, it's always the case that mother nature or nature itself can um has a huge role to play on the on the economic and the commercial aspects of a mineral development yeah and i, th- I think we've also got the overprint of regional metamorphism as well so that uh, that may have had a role in in coarsening the material as well right okay so, uh, so yeah maybe a combination of sort of that the heat that some C4 from that can affect to it, but, but also perhaps some uh, yeah, recrystallization, some coarsening of the of mineralization through uh, post depositional um, modification. Uh, it sounds as if you and I should um, have a beer sitting over uh, uh, on a pavement in Seville talking about geology, but perhaps this isn't the forum for the, 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 the finer points. No. Apologies for going down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> Coming back out of the rabbit hole to the kind of the goals for the year, um, 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 sock it to me. Yeah, so so coming back to your your, your previous question about the drilling. So uh, look, uh, yeah, so when we do get access to the to the uh, the, the particularly the farm to the west, um, you know that will trigger a, a you know, pretty major drill program. We'd be looking at twenty five to fifty drill holes, you know, yeah, to to actually delineate that uh, that near surface extension. Um, that's without sort of chasing it to to great depths, as as you sort of mentioned earlier. Um, so that um, yes, we've we've certainly got we've got a fair bit of money available in the twenty thousand meters of um, that we have uh, budget this year. What will go towards that um, that that drilling on those extensions? Bear in mind that most of the drilling is going to be shallow. Yeah. Our average of that so that, so to date is about two hundred meters. So the bit hardly the min the Potential open pit mineralization is yeah in the top two hundred meters. So well, the fourth and shallow shallow drilling you get a lot of lot of drilling done with uh, with with twenty with twenty thousand meter uh, drill hole and a drill meter budget. Um, so yeah, so we're going to con- we're going to focus on on that as soon as we get the access. But in the meantime, we're going to continue testing some of the other targets. And I'd like to at least keep uh, some drilling going on in parallel to. Yeah, the, the resource delineation type drilling uh, for, and then continue testing some of the new targets. You know, uh, make, to make another discovery in one of these other targets would be a, yeah, a big deal. So we don't, we don't want to get, we don't, don't want to walk away from some pretty, pretty exciting looking targets elsewhere. Yeah, no, completely understood. Um, uh, and it's always nice to be drilling open pitable, shallow mineralization from near surface. So, so, uh, uh, fingers crossed you get the, 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 the extension of the trend, uh, and the farm access, uh, in the coming weeks. And it's also exciting to be drilling deeper targets or other covered targets, which are based on kind of geophysics, geology and geochemistry. So uh, good luck with uh, the exploration, the wider exp- exploration program this year. Yeah. Thanks very much.